The cranial nerves. Here's what you need to know for the cranial nerves. There are 12 cranial nerves coming off various regions of the brain that are generally named for their function or where they innervate. You will need to name all 12 cranial nerves, know their correct Roman numeral, and a function for each nerve and a pathology for some. From this lateral view of the brain, we can see the cerebrum, cerebellum, and brainstem as it becomes the spinal cord. Now we see the brain in a slightly posteriorly rotated view. The brain is within the bony cranium and sagittally sliced. The yellow indicates many of the cranial nerves as they travel through cracks and holes in the skull to reach areas mostly in the head. This inferior view of the brain shows all 12 cranial nerves. We can see these nerves labeled, although missing their Roman numeral, on this image for easier identification. For this class, you will need to know the name, numeral, and function of each nerve, not its location coming off the brain. For reference, however, identifying a problem with the action of one of the cranial nerves can provide neurologists a clue as to the location of a problem by knowing where that nerve originates. The first cranial nerve is the olfactory nerve. This relays the sense of smell into the brain. The second cranial nerve brings our sense of vision to the brain as the optic nerve. So the oculomotor is involved in moving the eye up, down, medial, and up and lateral. This nerve also controls the lens to help us focus on near or distant objects, while also controlling our iris, which can dilate or constrict our pupil. In addition, this also controls our eyelid. Thus, a common pathology associated with this nerve is a droopy eyelid, as well as an eye that drifts outward, known as a lazy eye. Cranial nerve number four is the trochlear nerve, which controls one single muscle that moves the eye down and lateral, sort of like if you were going to take a sneak look at your neighbor's test without moving your head. We'll briefly skip cranial nerve number five as the next nerve also controls the eye and five doesn't. Cranial nerve number six, the abducens nerve, also only controls one muscle of each eye. This muscle is the most lateral muscle called abducens. The word abduct, which this nerve is named for, means to move away from the midline. So this nerve moves the eye laterally like looking directly to your side. Therefore, if something is wrong with this nerve, then the eye would not have any tone on this outer side and would then drift towards your nose. Thus, the pathology of the abducens nerve is being cross-eyed with the eye or eyes directed medially. To summarize the three cranial nerves that control the eye, we have number three, oculomotor with up, down, medial, and up lateral. Number four, trochlear with down lateral and number six, abducens with lateral. Back to cranial nerve number five, the trigeminal nerve. This is known as the dentist nerve as it serves the teeth among other facial regions. This is the nerve that your dentist will target to numb when doing a dental procedure, which is why you have whole sections of your face also feeling the effects. It is called the trigeminal nerve because it has three main branches. The ophthalmic branch includes the center of the face, nose, and surface around the eyes. The maxillary branch, which is the upper portion of the mouth, upper lip, and along the cheekbones. The mandibular branch serves the jaw, muscles for chewing, and the lower teeth and lower lip. The trigeminal nerve is considered to be a mixed nerve that is both sensory and motor in that it controls muscles, that's the motor, as well as relays sensations. Another mixed nerve is cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve. For sensations, it brings taste from the anterior portion of the tongue. For motor, it controls the facial muscles. If someone has damaged the facial nerve, then muscles on the damaged sides will droop as it won't have any muscle tone at all. Branches of this nerve are also what is targeted when someone gets Botox injections to minimize facial movement in an attempt to reduce wrinkles. The vestibulocochlear nerve, cranial nerve number eight, is only sensory. 
It brings to the brain your sense of hearing and equilibrium from the inner ear. Cranial nerve number nine, glossopharyngeal nerve, is mixed and its target area is where the name says it is. Glosso means tongue and pharyngeal refers to the pharynx which is the back of your mouth in the first part of your throat. Motor function is to control swallowing as well as saliva production from a nearby salivary gland. Sensations from this area include taste from the back of the tongue, touch sensations from your throat, and information from the carotid sinus lateral to the throat related to your cardiovascular respiratory system. Cranial nerve number 10 is known as the wanderer and is called the vagus nerve. That name is because it's the most widespread nerve of all cranial nerves. This nerve has control effects in the upper throat region assisting in swallowing, but it's mostly known for its autonomic control of our hearts, lungs, intestines, etc. Pretty much all of our organs are influenced by this nerve. It is the main nerve for our parasympathetic nervous system. This controls digestion and activities that occur at rest, pretty much the opposite of flight or fight. The accessory nerve is cranial nerve number 11, and it's just a motor nerve controlling muscles on and within the neck and on the shoulders. Its motor functions include turning the head and shrugging or lifting the shoulders. The last cranial nerve helps you stick your tongue out like a petulant child. Cranial nerve number 12, the hypoglossal, means below the tongue, which is where the muscle of the tongue is, so it controls moving your tongue around. When this nerve is damaged on one side, the muscle of the tongue on that side will be slack and have no tone. So the tongue will be contracted on the working side and slack on the damaged side. Now you're familiar with the names and actions of each of the cranial nerves. Doing some basic tests of a patient can easily identify if these nerves are in working order and if they're not, then you can see that it can be an indicator of where the brain damage may have occurred. We'll go through a color-coded summary for the nerve number, name, and function, along with the location in the brain. Olfactory nerve for smell is cranial nerve number one. We see number two in green as the optic nerve with vision. Number three in yellow, the oculomotor nerve that moves our eyes multiple ways as well as controlling our eyelid and focusing. Number four, the trochlear nerve is moving our eye down and lateral. While number five, which is that large blue one, is our trigeminal nerve, and we can see the three main branches coming off very quickly after it branches off the brain stem. Number six is the abducens nerve controlling lateral eye movement. Now we see the facial nerve, number seven, vestibular cochlear nerve, number eight, for our hearing and our balance, as well as number nine, glossopharyngeal, swallowing, salivation, as well as some of our taste and some sensations from within the inner ear. The vagus nerve is controlling all of our organs. The accessory nerve, number 11, is swallowing as well as muscles of our neck and shoulder. And finally, the hypoglossal nerve is a little more anterior, so we see that in the light orange, and it controls movement of the tongue. This table may be more helpful to study for what you'll be asked of our exam, number, name, action, and a pathology for some. To help you learn the nerves, you can use these mnemonics. The first one on the left tells you the first letter of the name of the cranial nerve in order from 1 to 12. The column on the right tells you if the nerve is sensory, motor, or both, with the first letter of each word being either S for sensory, M for motor, or B for both.